Hi guys, Jonathan Mark Mendes, Painted Love, and welcome back to my channel. Today's project's not gonna be a full furniture makeover, it's just about a technique. Over the last few weeks, um, many of you have poked me for this one, so I decided to showcase it again. It's the leaf technique. You can see here behind me, some of you will have noticed in my workshop, these images. This is the actual technique. Um, some of you will have seen it on the Alice, Annie Sloan Challenge. Um, I used it there. And many of you that have followed me for some time, you will remember this technique. I came up with it five years ago. Um, I did a, a rough tutorial then back in Madeira with some fig leaves. Um, so some of you might have already seen it there, but I've had five years of enjoying using this technique. So I'm gonna take you through it in a more detailed way give you as much knowledge as I can give you on the best way to achieve this. But I want you guys, if you're gonna follow this um, tutorial, I want you to use some boards of wood before you go over your best piece of furniture. It's about honing the technique before using it over your furniture projects. So let's take a closer look at some of the projects that I've done in the past to achieve these gorgeous looks. Okay guys, so what we've got here is two boards. I'm gonna do one that's colorful and one that's neutral. The neutral one, I'm gonna work as if it's the fossil kind of look. Um, so I'm gonna be using neutral shades like um, Annie Sloan, Old Ochre, Old White, and maybe a couple of other shades. And then on the more colorful side, we're gonna do all of the greens, kind of get the green leafy look. Um, what I would say about paint choice, um, I know this best to work with Annie Sloan chalk paint. It's fuller bodied. It just kind of really works really well. I haven't yet tried it with any other brand of paint, but there's nothing stopping you using um, an additive like salt wash to another brand of paint, getting a really good consistency and giving that a go. Leave some comments in the box below and let me know how you get on. Anyhow, so all I'm gonna do at this stage before collecting the leaves from the garden is giving both, um, both boards a coat of paint. The coat of paint, um, it can just be to cover up the surface. You wouldn't want to go straight over a wooden surface. Um, you do need this canvas coat. It absolutely is crucial because chalk paint is very absorbent. It needs to be on and dry, maybe do this the day before. If it's a furniture project, do it the day before. Good couple of coats, probably in a shade that you are pulling the leaves back to, if that, if that makes sense. It will make sense when you get to the other end of the um, tutorial. So in this case, I'm doing neutrals, so I'm keeping it neutrals. On this one, I'm gonna go with a mid um, tone of green, which is gonna be on teal screen. So, just give your project or board um, one to two coats. Um, this is, I'm working on MDF, so this is a very porous wood anyway, so it's absorbing the paint. So I think one coat will be fine. You do not need to wax this layer, it's fine. You can just leave it, but I would leave it to harden and cure for quite a while before moving on to the overall technique. So that's that one. Let's flip it out for this board and we're going to go with on teams for this one.
Here's my spoils from the garden. I've done a bit more foraging and I've come up with these leaves that I'm gonna try and incorporate into the project. Um, this um, part of the tutorial is gonna be a lot of talking. Don't skip by because this is one of the most crucial parts of the tutorial, even though it's lots of talking. It's regarding the leaf that you choose. Now there is many leaves in your garden that you will be able to choose from, but some will work really well and others won't. Um, I've always found that perennial plants in my garden work the best. Things like this lovely circular leaf. I do not know which plant this is from. Um, I will have to ask Mr M which one this is from. But look at the underside. Absolutely full of details. Loads of gorgeous veins. So I know that this will be a great leaf to use. Also, look at the flexibility of this leaf. It's kind of thin, it's pliable, it's kind of flat. Um, so that is kind of the best leaf to use. Also, one of my favorite leaves to use is the, um, the geranium leaf. Now this one is the perennial geranium, which comes up once a year. It's got a beautiful star-like shape, loads of detail. And again, it's really flexible and underside, you can see great vein detail. Also, we have a fern leaf here. Now, everybody loves the fern leaf. They've seen me use it many a times, but I've got to be honest, fern leaves are quite tough, um, especially for a beginner. You can do this technique with a fern leaf. You've clearly seen me do it. But the, the main stem of this is quite strong. It's not as flexible. It's kind of bouncy. If you look at that, it's kind of bouncy. Um, and you can take the individual fronds off and do a pattern with them and they are gorgeous. The individual fronds, they're flexible enough to do this, but it just takes a little bit more um, working um, a fern leaf. I've also brought two other leaves here from the garden, one of which is the hydrangea leaf. Now, what you can see here, again, look, that's really, it is flexible, but it's got a really strong, thick stalk. It's really tough. Um, and a bay leaf, again, this is kind of like cardboard. It's really strong, not so flexible. Um, and these leaves, you can get them to work, but they don't work as well. One little tip that I would say for, if you have um, maybe an oak leaf from a tree, they're the same as kind of these leaves. You can get them to work, but what I would say is just a day or so before you want to work those leaves, grab a book or a magazine and just open it up to a clean page kind of place your leaf in, press them. Kind of just press them for a day or so. Uh, they will lose a little bit of moisture out of the leaves and they will kind of go a little bit more softer. So that's a little technique that you can use if there's a leaf that you kind of think is gonna be a little bit precarious. Sometimes I've done it with the fern leaves. Um, you can't leave them to completely dry out because they will just dry out and crumble into your paint. It kind of just needs to be um, a night, two nights at the most, absolutely at the most. But alternatively, just go back for these gorgeous supple leaves, the um, perennial leaves. I think this is from Honesty. Look how beautiful that leaf is. It's a lovely heart-shaped leaf. And again, underneath, lots of gorgeous vein detail. We are gonna try and do a fern. This little leaf, this fern leaf, we'll go with this one because it's really um, a new leaf and it's kind of really supple. So we're gonna try it with this leaf. And we'll probably go with all of the um, unusual shaped leaves on the um, neutral palette. And then I will use all of the gorgeous um, star-like um, leaves on the colorful one, and we'll just add greens underneath. So let's get stuck in with preparing the leaves. Most of the leaves don't need much preparation. Um, certain leaves like this one and the geranium ones, look, we have a stalk that kind of sticks up. So that can't be pressed down. If you press it down, look what happens. It kind of puckers up. So the best thing to do with that is nip it off. I'm going to nip it off with my um, nails and just flatten the leaf out. So that's one leaf prepared. The same with the geranium leaves. They kind of sit up from the center. So just nip them out right to the base and it just makes them very flat. So they can lay flat now into your paint. So that's what I'm going to do across all of these. Certain leaves like this one, it's kind of, the leaf's kind of, the stalk's kind of sitting outwards. That'll be fine. We can use the stalk on that one. We can leave it in and work the stalk into the overall pattern. Um, fern leaves, like I said, we're just gonna kind
kind of work that leaf into the embedded paint. So I'm gonna go through all of the leaves, so I've got my stock ready, and then we're gonna start laying these into the paint. So I'm gonna start with my neutral board first. I'm gonna jump from one board to another. So you're gonna see lots of different things happening, different styles of working this technique. So first up, I've got all of my leaves. This is gonna be the random leaf with the ferns on. I'm gonna stick, um, the other one's gonna be more pattern with color. Um, and all I'm gonna do is I'm taking the same color. It can be any color that you want. This is gonna be the neutral one. All of the details are gonna come back with the wax at the end. And I'm applying a healthy coat, and I would say less than a millimeter thick. It does need to be thick to take, and it needs to be wet to take the leaf. So whereabouts you kind of want to embed your leaf, um, there is little bits of crud in here, but that'll add to the um, fossil-like effect afterwards. Um, so fairly thick, especially with the fern leaf, it's kind of quite strong. And then I'm going to drop vein side down. I'm going to drop the leaf into the paint. Um, like so, I'm going to manipulate that leaf where I want it. And then I'm just going to push it into the paint. Just tap it down. It does get messy. Um, it's supposed to get messy. Don't worry about how the... Um, Paint goes over the leaf, that's fine. It's gonna be painted over later on down the line. So I'm pushing down. And here you can see there's a little bit of lift off on the certain leaves here that don't like to stick down. Like I said, firm leaves, that, that central part. So you might need to just push right down. I use my thumbnail just to kind of almost snap them off at the, at the stalk. So I'm gonna push that down. The top's gone down really beautifully and yeah, it's one of those messy things. Just keep on stroking these leaves into the paint. It needs to kind of embed into the paint um, and become sort of decoupage leaves, I suppose. Think of it like gluing the leaf down with paint. I'm gonna move away from this and move on to another area and then keep on coming back. It's one of those things that you're gonna have to keep on coming back to the leaves as it's drying and keep on pushing into the paint it will eventually stick itself down. So we'll go for we'll go for this big round leaf now. I've taken the stalk off, which you will have seen me do. Um, and then we're gonna kind of pop this over there. Healthy amount of paint again. Happy with that. And then I'm gonna just lap it over the edge. And these ones kind of uh, wrinkle a little bit, so you have to spread them out, spread them in, push them into the paint. But look at that, it went down nice. You can see the difference of how the um, perennial leaves kind of just stick straight into the paint. Um, make sure that you're pushing firmly on the stalk area because that will have lift and keep on going back for that area as it's drying. So that's another one. We might go for this leaf, I'm not sure what that's from. It was from a shrub, so we're gonna add some of these here and there. These are a bit stronger. They could have been done with being pressed, but I'm gonna go for it and just keep on pushing down into the paint. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. There's a little bit of lift, but you wanna kind of make sure all of the edges of the leaf is kind of sealed. Um, we'll move on to the next one. Um, I know that these will go on absolutely beautiful. They are gorgeous. The, the, the stalk does stand up on this, but I'm gonna try and flatten it down and keep the stalk. So we'll fill in this area up here. Straight in. Yeah, that lays lovely into the paint. They're just a little bit more flexible.
So at this stage, this is how it should look. Um, they're all quite flat and they've got kind of good contact to contact. I've just spent the last 20 minutes um, working over each leaf, pressing down. You could alternatively at this point, as if you want to speed the process up, you could use some gentle heat over this. I wouldn't advise a hairdryer because it could lift the, get air underneath the leaf, and lift it up. But I, I would say a heat gun, a gentle heat over the top as you're pressing down, it will really help um, speed up the process. So, um, but I've just been doing it over the time. I've had a cup of tea, just keep on going back, pressing back down, checking each leaf has got a really good um, kind of adhesion. It's not gluing, but it's like gluing with paint and making sure there's no kind of lifted off um, leaves. So this is where it should look. You can see there's still wet paint drying. So um, you want this really to be on for about um, two hours at least, maybe three. Um, don't leave it overnight. The leaves will dry up too much. Um, the paint underneath each of one of these leaves, although the outside is dry or just about dry, underneath it will be really wet. So you you have got a bit of play time with this. So you can go over your whole piece, uh, kind of work back to the beginning when you do the second part of the process. Onto the more colourful sample board and we're going to be using the geranium leaves. And I've just been looking at this particular leaf and it has this lovely red dot in each crevice where it joins in. And I think I'm gonna try and recreate that kind of look. I have three greens, Antigua Green, Furl and Amsterdam. I want to create a mix of color underneath. Um, so let's get stuck in. We're gonna start with um, the base color, which is Antigua Green. We're gonna go for it right in the center here. I've got three brushes. I might pick up a little bit of Furl as well, just to add some tonal difference, maybe around the edges kind of think where you're placing um, the colours in comparison to the leaf. So add in tone, go back for the on teams, add a little bit more and blend it in. That's good. And then I'm going to pick up, now this is going to be slightly tougher. We're going to look at the leaf where it's going to lay and I'm going to pick up the, um, this is a little bit of primer red and I'm just going to kind of blob a little bit primer red <laughs> This is a bit random. You're kind of guessing where you're gonna have these dots um, incomparable to what's on the leaf. It might work, might not work. I'm just giving it a go. This is the first time I've done it, but I do put mixes of color underneath. So here we go. We're gonna pop that. It's probably not gonna fit in the right place, but hey ho, I'm gonna try it anyway. Right, that's the first leaf in place tapping it down. Like I said, these leaves are more delicate. They're easy to push into the paint. You don't need nearly as much paint to tap it down. You can just see um, into the paint straight away, like so, easy. Right, let's move on to another leaf. I'm gonna kind of go over here where we've got a little bit of the furl. Maybe we'll add, this time we'll add a little bit of the Amsterdam green, change the green up a little bit. Um, kind of ombre a little bit across, adding. I do think I'm gonna put some of the red in. Now I've started with the red, even though I don't know where it's gonna go, I'm just gonna pop a little bit of red. The kind of autumnal shades. Um, we'll go for a smaller leaf. Um, let's go with this one, lovely. I'm going to turn that the other way around. I'm going to pop it there. A little bit of overlappage, but that's fine. Tapping it down into the paint. Making sure all of the edges have great contact to contact with the paint and the board. Remember, it's a little bit like gluing the leaf down. This is why I love working with these leaves. They're very easy to work with. You do not have to um, worry too much about the amount of paint and how it presses into the paint. Right, next leaf.
So my neutral board has had a couple of hours drying time. I can still feel that there's a slight dampness to the paint underneath the leaf. I can feel it squidging around just a fraction. But we're gonna move on to layering some paint over this. So this is now like reverse stenciling. So these leaves become a stencil. Now, how you apply your paint at this stage is entirely up to you. You could take a roller and roll it on for a slightly more smoother finish. Um, with this one, because we're going for that fossil-like feeling, I'm gonna go with old white and a little bit of country gray. I'm gonna layer it on quite thickly over the edges of the leaf, and I'm gonna heat dry it with the heat gun to try and get a few cracks in there because this one's all about dark wax and what it picks up. So hopefully we'll get the leaves that pick up and some of those cracks. Coming back in with a flat brush and this is old white and I'm just gonna um, layer on quite thickly, brushing away from the edges of the leaves. not going into the leaf, especially the fern leaves, because they will pucker up if you're not careful. Kind of brushing away. I'm using old white and country gray as a mix here. I wanted it to be slightly paler with the old white. There we go. Each leaf, as you can see, I'm kind of going over the leaf and away from the leaf a little bit. I'm not kind of pushing into the leaf. And I'm doing any kind of what way brush strokes, leaving it quite heavy and thick because this is the one that I want to kind of get that textured um, fossil kind of look. No rhyme or reason again, it's kind of one of those things. Again, taking my time over the fern leaves. Heavy, not many passes over. Working across, go that way, brushing out from the fern leaves. Right, we're now gonna do the reverse stenciling on the colorful piece, and I've decided to go with real contrasty colors. So I've got the real bright greens and a little bit of autumnal shades underneath the leaf. So now I'm gonna go with a very blank, um, plain background on this one. I'm gonna go with um, Annie Sloan uh, Athenian Black. So it's gonna be really um, contrasty. You can go any what colorway with this. I like contrasty when I'm using the bright greens. I think it looks really good. Although I have done it with Paris Gray and neutrals and it works just as well. So I've got a, an old chip brush. This is a natural hair brush. And on, in this occasion, we're not gonna layer it on and work out. We're gonna do like a little bit like stenciling. We're gonna pounce the color on. So we're gonna go around each leaf gently does it on each one and just pounce around the edges. You can just see where the leaves are. So I can just kind of add a little bit of color to each one of them. And of course, these, the pouncing is gonna create a interesting texture anyhow. Use your oldest brush. I think this always works better with an old brush. This one's kind of on the edge of being old, but not quite.
Okay, I've got a little helper with me. Um, she won't seem to leave me alone at the minute. What we're moving on to is now we're gonna move on to, can you please not stand on everything? Um, we're gonna move on to removing the leaves. Um, everything's really dry, good and proper. Like I said, there may be a little bit of moisture under the leaf, that's fine. It will create some gorgeous detail, I am sure. Um, so I'm gonna start on the um, blackboard first because I know that this is gonna be the more colorful results and you'll see much better on camera. I've got here, I've got a little palette knife and this other little tilt, this is a crafting tool, just to kind of help me lift each leaf. Lily, come on you. Oh. So I'm moving back on to, and I've got a little helper here. Can I go in? So I'm moving back on to my, remove. <laughs> so I'm moving back on to the removal of leaves. Everything is good and proper dry. As you can see, cat walking through um, dry paint. Um, she has to be, look, she's covered me in hair. She just has to be everywhere that I am. Okay, moving on, I'm gonna work on the black. I've got cat fur everywhere. Okay, moving on to the removal of the leaves. This is good and proper dry. Both of them are really dry. I've left them uh, a good hour and I've heat gunned them. I've got cat fur all over my face because Lily keeps on walking through everything and she's rubbing up against me. She may come and help us in a minute. Um, so each leaf will need to be removed. I've got two tools for this, a palette knife, that really helps to lift the leaves. I've got this other little gadget, which I think it's from clay making, um, and that will really help. So we're gonna start with the colored one first, and we're gonna go with lifting these leaves because you're gonna see better on the camera. So I'm just popping the palette knife under the middle of the leaf, and I'm kind of wrenching up, slowly lifting. It may split, don't panic, and peel away from the center out. So there you go, that's one half off. Slowly do it. You may lose little bits that you might have to kind of, that's it, lift on. Oops, that's it. Lift them independently of. There's another bit. So what you can see now is the most perfect shaped leaf. It's kind of like a reversed stencil. Take your time over this, lifting each little bit. I can already see beautiful veins in each, each leaf. There's gorgeous, beautiful markings, which will come up an absolute treat with dark wax. So I think that's just about nearly all of that off. There's a few little bits around the edges that I can just kind of scrape away with this tool. Um, that's it, we've lost Lily, she's gone. I'm just gonna lift these little bits. Just take your time over it. And there's a whole other side here. Try not to leave anything there because it will remain there forever once you've waxed. That's just about it. There's a couple of little bits here and, here and there. like exca excavation, quite literally. Perfect. Right, let's go for another leaf. This one, we'll go here for this smaller one here.
On with the neutral board. Now you're not gonna see as much detail because it's the same color on color. Um, you will see more detail when we clear and dark wax this, but nevertheless, it's always fun removing the leaves from the paint. Um, there's a slight color difference here because we did one flat color underneath. This leaf has come out absolutely beautiful, stunning. Um, I can just see the most amazing detail here. That is gonna look wonderful once waxed. Um, let's take these little bits there. It's kind of the supple leaves that just work so well. Uh, this one's got a stalk, so we can pull that from the stalk and peel back. And there we go. Straight through the middle. Bit of tidying up to do here. So we're at the final hurdle now. I just wanted to show you a close up of one of the ferns. Some of the spores from the back of the fern stayed with the paint. Absolutely gorgeous. Those brown little dots, they stayed with it. And because this is the fossilized look, I really, really happy that that stayed with it. And we're gonna use clear and dark wax across both boards. This is the colorful one. Um, I'm gonna go with a brush and some Annie Sloan clear wax before I add the dark wax. This is when the magic happens. Um, a liberal amount over everything into the details. This is where we're gonna find some of those lovely cracks in the paint. Yeah, I can see them almost in the light now, shining through. Make sure there's plenty on. There's still little pieces of the green coming through, but they'll come off slowly but surely. I'll be able to get them out. That's it. Um, clean cloth. Take off the excess. And then we're going to use Annie Sloan dark wax just to bring back all of those gorgeous details on all of the ferns. So again, any what way, pushing into all of the crevices and details. And this will really bring out those gorgeous natural details across all of those lovely veins in those leaves. So you really must put the clear wax on at this point, otherwise it will grab. Um, we're gonna use the same cloth again, just to polish up any of those details. And if you need to remove any excess wax, 
you can do with clear wax, just to freshen some of the areas. I'm really happy with that. The way that looks now is just stunning. Neutral, I really, really like. It's just looks absolutely gorgeous. It really, truly really does look like a fossil that we've carved a piece of stone and found all of these gorgeous fauna, flora, not fauna, inside. There you go. I'll give you close-up details in a little while. How beautiful, absolutely stunning. So let's go on to the colourful one and we're going to do the same thing again, a very quick process. We're going to go over with clear wax, the whole thing, liberal amount. Because there's a lot of detail, you really have to work the wax in. What's that? Take the excess off. And we're going to go back in with the dark wax, mainly in the leafy areas. Don't forget, the reason we're doing this is to bring back those fine vein markings that were left in the paint. Now with this looking dark, I can go over the whole thing. That's that. Remove the excess. It's almost got a leather-like quality. It's beautiful. When you stipple, you end up with that leather-like quality. And that is it. Let me show you close up, especially this first leaf that we did. It's absolutely stunning. So there we go. That's it. Two projects complete, two sample boards complete. I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. Um, I know it wasn't a furniture one, uh, but you can use this across furniture, it does work. And if you do achieve a great result with this technique over furniture, be sure to send me a picture. I would love to see all of your different combinations. The possibilities are truly endless when it comes to colour and leaf choice. Um, happy painting. I will catch you all on the next tutorial. Thanks a lot. Take care.